Is Andrew Tate good for, for the guys or not, in your opinion, and why? I'd say absolutely not. Okay. Okay. Well, wh why is that? I think that the I think that the idea of masculinity and success and fulfillment that's being sold by a lot of people on the right, I think, leads to the same type of spiritual wasteland that you're trying to like pull these young men out of. I would say, like when I look at somebody like um, Andrew Tate, or even like for you guys, or and anybody that talks about red pill stuff, it always feels like your big markers for success are how many women can you get, how much money can you make, what kind of cars do you drive. And at the end of the day, I just, I don't know how old you guys are, but like when I think back to the things I've had in my life, like I don't like remember the third, you know, new iPhone I got. I don't remember like when I got my new car, like how it was cool for like a week, but like there are memories that you make with other people. There are things that you achieve or accomplish in your life for me, maybe stuff related to music, maybe stuff related to gaming when I was in esports. Like these are the standout memories that I have, but I never hear anybody in like the Red Pill Society building towards that. It always feels like they're building towards like the most hollowed existence that you possibly could have as a man that gets like signed off by mainstream consumer society. You've applied that a lot to me, but I've never even really talked about that. And if, sure. even if I do, I want the ability to buy those things. It's not those things are going to make me happy. I just want to have the power to not be restricted by anything. Yeah, but I guess that the argument that I always make is that if you spend all of your life trying to get the capability to have everything, right? Like a man who spends his whole life on the mission, once that mission is fulfilled, he has nothing. Because your whole life you've just spent trying to get stuff right and, and you haven't worked on building relationships building friendships accomplishing something real um, like the best the best type of advice you get from red pill is at least working out is, as long as you're doing it for yourself and not to impress a chick but like because building your body means something so right? you don't you think something something. get money i don't know i don't think that's that important i think that there are like upgrades to your life you can make if you're making fifteen thousand a year and you live with your mom and dad yeah you need to up your money of course but like if you've got a decent job and and i've seen this as a millennial there's a lot of people from my generation who are sitting in their apartment making one hundred forty thousand a year doing work from home who fucking hate themselves they have no friends except for the ones that they see light up on discord they have no hobbies except for the four thousandth game of league of legends they play for the day and they have like no fulfillment in their life they have nothing and then these are the types of people that go online like how do i meet girls how do i meet friends like why is it that i've hit every big marker in my life but i'm fucking miserable and I think that that void isn't being answered by anybody, I think, right now. Would you admit, right, that life is about experiences? Yeah, for sure. So if I'm a guy living in this world today, wouldn't I want the best experience possible? Absolutely. So if I'm telling guys to be better and become better themselves and experience more things in life, I want to have the best in life. For example, nice cars, nice lifestyle, because that does breed experiences. Now, I get what you're saying. Most guys may not get to that marker, and they may be miserable on the journey. But we're just saying, look, if you live on this earth right now, how do you improve? How do you become better? Because that is one way you can actually have purpose in life, becoming better. I agree with you, but we're almost begging the question. Having the best experiences, the best type of life, mm. what are those experiences? Like, I, I wish we had somebody older here who was like wealthy, but like, I guarantee you, if you pull like a 40, 50, 60 year old dude, I'm 33, I'm decently wealthy, millionaire before 35, I've like got my shit together, traveled the world. Yeah. When I think back, when I think back about the things that mean the most to me, it's never the new expensive computer I got. It's never the new expensive car I got to drive. It's never like the, it's always gonna be like the experiences I've had with other people, especially people I love. So like the experience I've had with my wife, mm -hmm. ex-girlfriends, like never like the car that I drove or like the newest cell phone I have. Like it's the memories you make with other people, I think. And to some extent, money can help you do that. But to another extent, money can help you do that. I have my family um, on my mom's side all came from Cuba. And I watch my my Cuban family is so divided. Yeah. On on one end, I've got my God bless my love them. My parents are amazing people. I love them. They love me. But oh my God, do they run the rat race? <laughs> They're in a huge house. They're both on social security. My dad works full time. He collects disability and retirement from the Air Force, and they're gonna work till they die. They've already got like one foot in the grave or they're walking down working full time. And like, where's the happiness in that? Whereas if I look at my other, the other part of my Cuban family, half these people live in Hialeah. They live in these dog shit apartments. Shut the flood. Yeah, every time it fucking rains, you've got cockroaches around. But man, every Friday, Saturday, they're having these huge parties, they're having barbecues, people are going over. They don't have expensive shit. Half these motherfuckers don't have phones, yeah. but they're all having fun times. They love each other. They're having like an amazing time every weekend. They've got friends, relationships. And, and I look at like both of these worlds and I'm like, fuck, like, well, who's winning at the end of the day? Because I, on one end, I see the American dream 
which is chasing the houses, the money, the pools, the big lifestyle. And then on the other hand, I see like these like dumb Hispanic people, but like these guys are so much happier. We're like what the fuck? And I think even you guys are clued into that to some extent because I hear, I hear it in your rhetoric, and I know it's dripped down this idea of like Western women and Western lifestyles. You know, you they have it tonight? more, they have it more figured out in these other parts of the world. And in these other parts of the world, they're not running the same race that we run in the West, but we're obsessed about getting like cars and houses and bitches. So, so I just make one more point on this. Mm -hmm. So recently, right, I just bought a 2022 Rolls Royce Colonial truck, right? Yeah, I saw the story, yeah. Not to flex or anything, but like that experience there, you know what I'm gonna do? I have one that I care about that watched me on the journey up. I'm gonna for a ride in it. And like my mom is like, decided to come see it or whatever. I'm just saying like, yes, you're right. Chasing things like material stuff is kind of dumb. However, when you want to understand why you're doing it, it makes sense. So for example, giving people that you care about, your family, your mom, you, you know, your, your dad, your son, whatever, Giving those, them the, those experiences will change your life. And also as well, let's say they get sick. My guy and I was sick a couple of years ago, right? And I didn't have money to pay for his stuff, he'd be dead right now. So having the money, you need it, no matter what. It's like breathing, bro. Without money, you can't survive. So we're just saying, look, get as much money as possible so you can help your family. But as well, you know what, get experiences too. Traveling, being with people, but don't mind you can't do much in this, in this world. It's sad, but it's what it is. I don't think the red pill is as materialistic as you're making it out to be. It's super materialistic. But... Myron's not materialistic at all, for example. He's opposite. Yeah, yeah. so um, I'm not even that materialistic. I was going to say, um, so um, my thing is, I've always ha heard this quote, and I, I love to quote it. It's, uh, money doesn't buy happiness, but it's a damn good down payment. And what I mean by that is, for us, when we talk about money and becoming successful, we always say, you know, you got to get in shape. You got to get uh, get your money up and then you got to understand female nature so that you can become a complete package, not to get women, but so that women are a byproduct of your success so that you project yourself in the world in a certain way. And we're really big on guys having like a purpose, because if you have a purpose, then you're going to every purpose. Um, <clears throat> you have a direction. And when you have a direction, you have a destination. When you have a destination, you have something to work towards. So my thing is I always tell guys, your value is not determined by the amount of girls you can get. Your value is determined by how much value do you create for the world. And then the women are gonna be attracted to that. So we tell guys like, yo, don't chase girls, chase success, and then the girls will follow after that, right? So that's one thing. And then like, um, my thing also is that me, myself, I'm a hardcore minimalist. I mean, I just brought back my 2002 Honda. You know, I don't really own anything nice except for like one Rolex that's a plain Jane. Uh, I don't spend it really any money except for like in the studio and then my real estate investments. But I think it's important for guys to have the capability to have these experiences you're talking about. So I agree with you 100% that life is built upon experiences, yeah. not materialistic things. Now, for some people, those experiences are, are centered around material things. It depends on the person, but my thing is, I look at it like, you need to have that money so that you have the capability to provide those experiences in the first place. And um, I know what you're saying, like with Tate and everything else like that, that he might not be good, a good example because um, it's hollow, he's telling guys get Bugattis or whatever. So I see your perspective on it. But what I would say is that if he teaches a guy how to make money, right? And that guy just needed a kick in the ass to tell him, hey, get out there, make some money, start a side hustle, etc." Well, then that person could decide what they want to do with the money, you know, because everyone makes money for different motivations. Some people do it for financial freedom. Some do it to flex. Some people do it to buy clothes or whatever it may be. And I think materialistic, materialistic things in general are stupid. But if it makes them happy, even for temporary, then, hey, man, do what you want to do. But I think it's important to have that money so you have the opportunity. It's a down payment towards that happiness to some degree is my thing. But I'm, my, I'm a big firm believer that you make the money not for girls, but so that you can go ahead and walk away from girls if they do some bullshit. It gives you an extra air of confidence because, you know, competence leads to accomplishments, which then leads to confidence. And that's the end product a lot of times for making the money. So I want the end product from making the money, not necessarily making the money to chase after the girls. If that makes sense. Sure. If it, and I guess we'll probably get into more of this in later topics, yeah. if that is the case, I think that's a good message, mm -hmm. right? The goal isn't to get certain things, it's to yeah. build yourself up to a position that those things come to you naturally. Yes, that's what you absolutely. want, right? That's what we say. And it's a better way to get those things too because then you like you really deserve them, you really earn them, and you're gonna keep them yeah. because you're not playing stupid games to get a hold of them. I do agree with that. Um, and like, I, I think that there are things you can spend money on to get good experiences, right? Yeah. So, you guys have been a podcast for like a year and a half. Yeah. You have an amazing studio. You've had a lot of success. Like every dollar that you pour into this mm -hmm. is a, a sense of fulfillment, right? You're not just buying shit to have shit, yeah. right? But you're like actively improving on something that I imagine you guys both probably feel, everybody in here probably feels really strongly about. So that's cool. I, I like, I support that. I think that's a good idea. But you got to admit, when you look at like the, the plethora, especially around the tape stuff, when I see all of the advertising for the Red Pill stuff, it doesn't feel like I hear about that that chasing of fulfillment very much, it all feels very materialistic. One thing Tate always says that a mm -hmm. dork who gets rich, like money just amplifies what you have. So a dork that gets super rich, that's why Bill Gates' wife ends up leaving and take half his money. 
Because you're just a dork with a bunch of money. It doesn't make you a better man to have a shit ton of money. You need to be a better man overall. Or else you're just a rich dork and everybody sure. looks down at you. But then it just, the only worries when you're tracking the metric, like, are you a better man because you have money? Or like you were saying, do you get more money because you end up being a better man? And the second one I think is okay. There are ways you can improve yourself to improve your life to get more money. But if the goal is the money, that's always going to be the goal. And when you attain it, like, you're going to be lost. You I know? think foundationally, if your drive is going to be a set of money, you, you're going to win because at that point, you're right. For example, we have a goal board in our, in our rooms, uh, you know, at least in my room. And when I hit each goal, it's like, okay, cool. I feel happy. But then I'm like, what's next? If you hit all your goals, then what, what do you do? So in that sense, I get what you're saying. But if you're coming from it, you know what? I enjoy the journey to get to where I'm at. Then it makes sense. Yeah, another thing too is why I tell guys all the time, like, um, you know, I went on a whole huge rant on this as far as like guys like attributing their value to the, and their notch counter getting girls is that it's a fleeting win because once you hit, you know, let's say 50 girls, oh, now I need 100. Once you hit 100, now I need 200, you know, and then you're never going to be satisfied because you're always going to want more girls. You're, you're like, I, I always say the male thirst for, you know, uh, sexuality from women is insatiable. You, you're always going to want more and more girls. So the only way that you can really satisfy that like drive to conquer is through accomplishing things and then letting women women be the byproduct. Because if you're gonna go ahead and chase after women, you're gonna be a very angry, bitter guy because you're gonna be dealing, ch chicks are fickle and flaky from the rip. That, that, that's just how they are. They're e emotionally erratic creatures. So I always tell guys, you go after the success because at least that's in your control. And then the girls are gonna come after. I, I, I use always use Drake as an example, right? So when Drake comes here to Miami, right? Drake? Yeah, Drake. <laughs> uh, what he'll do is he'll have a party, right? And he'll have like 50 to 100 girls show up. And he doesn't pay none of them attention, even though all of them are trying to go talk to him, right? And that's a perfect example, right? Obviously, like, on a higher scale, right? But I, my thing is I want guys to have that mindset where you're so successful that your work speaks for itself, and then girls want to get to come and meet you because he's already created value to the world, and the byproduct of that is the women naturally come to him. So I want guys to strive to be at that level, whether you're the top guy at your firm, you're the top guy on YouTube, you're the top guy in your office, whatever it may be. Like, if you look at like sales, right? Like um, people that work in sales, a lot of times the top salesman guy gets a bunch of the chicks and it comes from like women naturally being attracted to dominance hierarchy. So my thing is be the best guy that you can be and then the women are gonna come as a part of that. But when you chase after ass all day, which a lot of guys do, that's where you get that hollowed out feeling that you're talking about, which I agree with. Um, and I said that explicitly many times, you gotta become the best version of yourself and that comes from going to the gym, making money and then becoming that guy because the other thing too that Sneeko was saying as far as like you know these guys that are like losers that make money quickly maybe they just you know hedged on a good ass coin and then they made the money and they blew up Dorks. they didn't they didn't learn they didn't get the discipline the hardship of it, getting and, it yeah and they, and they didn't go through the you know the trials and errors of like becoming that guy like yeah. anyone anyone ever play pokemon you do the fucking rare candy trick mm -hmm. where you get like 99 rare candy and you take two pokemon you take one that's a level like five another one level five you train one by going to the elite four multiple times having him get his ass whooped or whatever it may be and level no up and then you take the other pokemon and you just give him rare candies to level 100 that pokemon that you give the rare candy to He's gonna be weak as fuck. His attack is gonna be weak. His defense is gonna be weak. His special is gonna Blue be weak. Decks. It's gonna be terrible when you yeah. look at him. But when you go to the other Pokemon that actually went through the fights and fought the Elite Four 120 times, his stats are gonna be way better. So that's kind of what it's like with like fast money leads to slow problems. But if you get the money in a way where you had to build yourself up, then you're somebody. This is why women like, right? There's so many trust fund babies here in Miami, and I'm sure you guys know this. Holy shit. I will yeah. say that coming to, because my wife wanted to move to Miami, and she wanted to be down here. And I've never seen so many, I was talking to Sneak about this, and, but I, I might not see the same crowds of people, but I see so many people. And I'm like, what do you guys do for work? And like, oh, you know, never. I was like, we're in South Beach. This place is fucking expensive, okay? Yeah. Like, I one bedroom apartment is like yeah. 5000 a month. What do you mean you don't fucking work? I like, know, oh, right. And I'm like, like, what the fuck? Like, everybody here, like, it's coming money, from money. Yeah, yeah the New York money or South American money. So, like, those people, right? Like, uh, perfect example. Like, I can't tell you how many girls have come on this pod and, like, deal with those guys, right? And they just tolerate them because they have money because they didn't go through the work to become a man to make that money. So, those guys are not, like, inherently attracted to them. They're just tolerating them because they have money. Versus a guy that made the money, he becomes a fucking somebody. That guy had to learn certain characteristics and had to build character to make that money. That's what's attractive. I've always said it. Women aren't attracted to money. They're attracted to the characteristics it takes to make a lot of money.